Teaching Blast. Technical seminars are an Intertech production. For instructorlet.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Hi, my name is Davin Michelson, and I'm one of the instructors at Intertech Training here in Egan, Minnesota. And what I'm going to show you here is the first chapter of an SSIS course that I've delivered as an MCT, a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I am an MCITP in BI for both SQL 2005 and 2008, and my email address there, davin at intertech.com. You can always shoot me an email if you have any questions about any of the courses or anything else, and I can redirect your question if I don't have the answer, or I can go ahead and send you a response right away. Now what we're showing here is the first chapter from the Microsoft official course for SSIS 2008. Know that these topics also apply for the most part to SQL 2005 as well as the 2008 R2 edition as well. When you come take the training at Intertech, I will actually be using a little bit different courseware that has more details and more exercises and more labs. But anyways, what I thought I'd do is go ahead and cover here within the next half hour or so about what makes up SSIS, which of course is the replacement for the old DTS environment that we had back in SQL 2000. So we'll take a look at an overview of SQL Server Integration Services, SSIS as they call it, as Microsoft's primary ETL utility, Extract, Transform, Load, and about using some of the Integration Services tools. This is a screenshot that actually shows a lot of different parts of SSIS and what's actually involved when we create this thing called an SSIS package. The whole purpose of SSIS, of course, is to take data from one or more data sources, possibly cleansing it, modifying it, or taking it just as is, and putting it into a data destination. Now, it could be putting it into multiple destinations as well, and even taking in data that we just don't find acceptable and putting that off into maybe an error log of some sort. Note that we can have any type of source and any type of data or destination to do this, if you will. We do this by creating an SSIS package, which is really a file that ends with the .dtsx extension, as you can see in the upper right corner of the screen here. A DTSX file is really just an XML document, but thankfully, with Business Intelligence Development Studio, which is BIDS, which is actually just Visual Studio, it allows us to give, it gives us a great designer to go ahead and create these DTSX packages. Some other things that you're seeing here, of course, are the tasks shown up in the yellow area there. That's what a package contains. A package actually contains one control flow, which is, acts as the actual backbone of the package, with any number of tasks. And one of the most important tasks that we have that exists in the toolbox is that data flow task. And you can see that the data flow task actually can contains any number of transformation shapes working with one or more sources and one or more destinations. I'll show you this within bids just so you have a good idea of what we're actually looking at. Know that bids is Visual Studio 2008. Keep in mind that the version of bids that you have will co-align, it'll actually align with whatever version of SQL Server you have. So if you have SQL 2005, you're going to get bids 2005, which is actually Visual Studio 2005. Whereas with SQL 2008, even the R2 edition, you're going to get Visual Studio 2008. So what is SSIS, of course? It is Microsoft's primary ETL utility. And the best part about SSIS is it comes bundled freely with SQL Server 2008. You actually get SSIS, which is an ETL utility, included with it. As well as you get a couple of other BI tools, right? For example, we get SSAS, SQL Server Analysis Services, and that allows you to go ahead and work with cubes, maybe pulling data from a data warehouse, and we also get SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Services, is also included with SQL Server. That allows us to go ahead and create awesome reports, perhaps maybe pulling data from a cube. Or we could go ahead and pull it from any other type of data source. And of course, SSRS allows us to create reports that can be viewed in a browser and even exported into multiple formats, such as Word, Excel, and even PDFs. SSIS is the platform for ETL operations. It is not the next version of DTS like we had in SQL 2000. 
They actually started from scratch and recreated the entire SSIS engine when it came out. Although you may see some references to DTS, for example, if you do some custom programming with SSIS, uh, maybe creating custom components, tasks, or transformations, know that those are still also brand new that when it came out with SQL 2005. In other words, when they started creating the new SSIS engine, they wanted to continue with the DTS, which is Data Transformation Services. They wanted to use that same acronym that it had in the earlier days, and then someone, perhaps in marketing, who knows where at Microsoft, decided to change its name to SSIS. SSIS is the platform for ETL operations, though, and people oftentimes purchase a license of SQL Server just to get SSIS capability, this ETL utility or capability, for their other types of databases out there. For example, uh, some other ETL operations that might be example for Oracle or some of the other databases out there are much more expensive, and so they'll just actually buy SQL Server just for its SSIS capabilities. SSIS does consist of one control flow engine in a package and any number of data flows that might be included within that control flow. I always like to tell people the control flow is the backbone of the entire SSIS package. And remember, an SSIS package is nothing more than a text file that is an XML format saved with a .dtsx extension. X, of course, standing for XML. So some common uses for integration services. As we can see, we can import and export data, maybe move it from one database to another. Maybe you have a data warehouse because you want to get more into the BI world with your company. Maybe the company needs to uh, start analyzing the widgets that they're selling and who's buying the widgets and some other things like that. Some of the questions are coming up, and those questions can only be answered through business intelligence where we can go ahead and maybe use some data mining structures, for example, or things of that nature. Well, we can go ahead and just move it from perhaps an OLTP database, an online transaction processing database, over to an OLAP style database where we could go ahead and create one or more cubes. And of course, this gets into the whole world of SSAS and uh, the way you want to model those cubes with a star schema or maybe do a little bit of snowflaking off of the stars. You know, and that's a whole different gamut altogether, depending on the model you want to go with and things of like that. Anyways, continuing on here with the slide, we can also use this to integrate heterogeneous data. For example, maybe you need to pull data from two completely different types of databases and then put them together into a single destination. Like you might have to pull your customers from a Microsoft CRM database, but you also got to pull your order processing out of a great Oracle app you've been using and put that into maybe a sales report or I should say a sales destination database and maybe that could be used and harvested and put into reports. Maybe you need to clean up the data. This is something I've done in the past as a consultant as well. I've gone ahead and worked on some um, projects where we had to move data from a mainframe and bring it into SQL Server. And the mainframe was able to go ahead and export the stuff as text files. And then what we did was we actually wrote custom SSIS packages to pull that data out and populate it into a database. Unfortunately, some of that data wasn't perfect. Some of the fields were often left blank. Uh, or some of them had the wrong type of data inside of there. And so within our SSIS packages, we could actually go ahead and clean and standardize that data so that the applications that would read that data wouldn't crash because of null values, for example, or wrong types of data. As well, even during the clean and standardization process, it was never a single sweep process. But instead, it was constant modifications to the SSIS package. And for the rows that were just absolutely garbage, maybe we just made a decision about those and not move those into the, the destination. And of course, as I suggested at the bottom there, supporting BI solutions might mean that you're using SSIS to populate a data warehouse. You could have it run on a schedule so that it takes all the daily orders, populates it into that data warehouse. Data warehouses are not typically the same as OLTP state of, uh, style databases. They are normally uh, denormalized. They're not normalized like an OLTP database, but instead they might have longer tables, wider tables, many more columns, making them uh, perform quicker to retrieve some sorts of data. So it can also go ahead and support uh, SSAS, for example, or other BI solutions that might not be Microsoft SQL Server related even. As well as, of course, don't forget reports are sitting on top of all of that. 
giving us some awesome information maybe for the vice president of sales, displaying information about his team and what sales has been working, what hasn't, uh, what products tend to sell at certain times of the year. You know, these are all questions or business intelligence questions that can be answered by this entire suite. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.